ES Tradeometer oversold, YM Tradeometer oversold. Midweek market video update on the HPS watch list, update on some other things. It's actually just going into Tuesday, but we have a major blizzard that we're going to have here in the northeast uh, starting tonight, late, you know, late tonight, early morning, tomorrow, Tuesday morning. Um, so I uh, I don't even know if I'm making it to the office. Either way, the show will go on. I, I'm, I'm doing my uh, video from my uh, downstairs dungeon office. And uh, I look forward to being on the air tomorrow during this historic blizzard. Right now they're calling for 16 to 24 inches, possibly even higher. We'll see what happens. Um, but I wanted to get on today. I, I left some of my notes at work. I should have uh, held on to them just in case. But I wanted to go over a few stocks. Um, get these out. Some uh, some thoughts on the long long term trade. Short uh, some some uh, thoughts on the short term trade. This Wednesday is probably the biggest event we'll, we've been um, we're going to see in a, quite a while. Uh, we have the Fed FOMC decision, and it's pretty much written. And in the books that we're going to get a rate rise, a rate height, and um, you know, is has this been you know factored into the market? Has this been talked about? Has this been predicted? Has this been everything that needs to be done to really not really be a big issue? And uh, so that's that's what's going to happen. There'll be a little volatility going into that uh, that time frame. That'll be two o'clock on Wednesday, and there might be some uh, great opportunities. There might be fa some fast trading. But after all is said and done. Remember, we're still in the early stages of this new administration. They have something to pr they, they they seem to have something to prove. So we still haven't had our tax uh, reform. Uh, we haven't had the infrastructure package. We haven't s had the health care done. There's other things out on the table that uh, need to come um, to light before I think this market here's kind of pulls back a little. You know, if we're going to talk about sell the news event, you know, I don't think this is the event to sell the news. Now we could have a, t a little sell-off overall. I mean, we're not going to call it perfectly. We're going to pop, drop, then pop, and continue to run higher. You know, the classic, um, classic reversal on a reversal. You know. Uh, but let's talk about stocks here. Uh, there's some really interesting ones. Joe, I'm in this. It's coffee ETF. We've been in this about four times over the last uh, couple years. And each time it's just basically off a of divergence. And you can see the spots we've been in probably. Here was one. I think there was one back over here. There's probably one over here, just an oversold level. Um, there was a, a sell side divergence over here. There was a channel here. And right now, you know, I got back in on this possible divergence here. And it kind of drifted around and, and plopped back down. And, you know, it actually, this bullish engulfing pattern with the volume is just as strong as this, uh, you know, just it, it, it looked like it failed the divergence uh, yet it came back and kind of showing something with a spike in volume in this engulfing pattern when we have these bigger candles on this type of pattern on a pullback inside of a, a channel there's usually a good shot of a follow-through day on this so the you know the daily could easily start to turn back up this could have been just a little choppy area um, this pattern still looks really good so the Joe's is still good I think we have a I think we have a gap up tomorrow on this uh, because of the volume t we had today and the uh, the candle, we see that type of move. We had a nice gap up at NIB. NIB is the, the uh, cocoa ETF, and again the same thing. We got it on this divergence. It kind of acted the same way, kind of pulled back, it kind of faked out, break, broke out. But we're in the right zone. This we're in the, we're in the kill zone right now. You know we're, we might not uh, be nailing the bottom. You know actually I had I got some over here. But now it's because of because of the uh, the divergence I added to and brought my average down. But I feel like this zone right here, the 2490 zone, with the divergence that's happening, very similar to the the, the coffee ETF that we have a, a potential bounce, maybe even right back up to that support level that we broke down out of uh, 2718 area, possibly even higher. Um, so the NIB here, we're holding that divergence. Uh, looks like a good bottom play. These gap up a lot, and look at the volume today. The gap up in the volume. So I want to see this follow through tomorrow. Um, here we had decent volume and a big gap up in a follow through tomorrow. I expect that tomorrow. Now I'm already in this. I already have NIB, but this is one of those stocks that uh, give you that back. There's nothing you can do about it tonight if you're listening to it. 
But if you listen to the show, we talk about these stocks, and sometimes if we catch that volume spike, we'll talk about the potential of a, a gap up. This has a great potential for a gap up tomorrow. NIB and both J J O and NIB. But with the volume on NIB, NIB and a gap up today, definitely see some follow through, just like back here, turning back up. Really excited to be in this one now. Uh, looks great. I have no issue with it at all. Um, there is a couple cheap ones I'm on, PRGO. And I don't want to concentrate on trying to find bottoms in these stocks. This was a, a drug manufacturer, I believe. Or, uh, yeah, drug. And, um, and we're on that lower trend line. And it's, you know, it's not a very nice looking chart. The truth is this thing has stock rot. Stock rot is when a stock has been going down for uh, more than a, more than a year, two years. I usually call stock rot, like just to continue downward. It does have bounces, but lots of times those bounces will come with oversold stochastic underlying trend line, which we have here. So we're taking a shot on this, but it's not the best setup I could bring you. I mean, this is more of a trying to pick a bottom, and sometimes that's not what you want to do. It's just something I uh, I took on this. You know, it was a couple that came up on my scan. I decided to go for this, but that definitely not my number one pick. Here we have Brinker EAT. Very similar. Not a, I'm, I'm not a big fan of catching bottoms. I do like the restaurant stocks though. Uh, Darden Restaurants, one we've been, uh, you know traded a lot. Dunkin Donuts. Darden here acting much better than Brinker. Brinker is on the brink of collapse it looks like. But you know when you look back at this chart you see this big retracement trend line. Um, you know it's, I like that we're on it. You know, I like that we're on this trend line. We haven't, you know, it's it's an ugly chart. The only thing we have going for us is actually this trend line. You know, we do have that weekly oversold. We have the daily oversold. The hourly is oversold. I mean, it would be fantastic and a nice bounce on this. You know, fantastic. Everything, uh, what we call a multiple time frame setup is here, but there's no other proof to lead, lead me to believe that we have a divergence or any type of momentum shift or anything on the charts that we could just say guarantee or not more guarantee but give you a high probability setup that this is going to move higher. Brinker is another setup where um, this is your buying a weakness. You, you, you're taking a little bit more risk on this one uh, because of the situation. You don't have that HPS kind of uh, trigger. So a couple of those we have. The other, um, what was the other? Uh, oh yeah, a couple of new ones I want to bring to your attention. Charles Schwab, the brokers. Now, with the market moving higher, of course you need a broker. Um, get into some stocks. Make some extra cash. You know, this is going to continue to be uh, something I think more and more people are going to realize that that's what, that's what you need to do. Well, a lot of these brokers are trading near the highs. AMTD, I have to look at that one. That one is not trading near the highs. But the, the Charles Schwab here is uh, a very nice looking chart. And and this is, uh, I think, even more important. You know, me uh, studying stochastics so much, I uh, tend to recognize certain um, uh, situations that arise when we have uh, stochastics. It's embedded right under that 80 line or embedded or just above the 20 line you know we see things uh, which mean continued strength in this case this is a you know this is kind of a continued strength type of pattern where we start to see this bang up here not yet really get overbought where we trigger back down like we did over here and over here here we haven't really triggered that area so we're actually pushing a little bit higher looks like it wants to get to 45 I think he, like I said today on the radio I think it's a two-point trade definitely was um, thinking of getting into this soon so I might uh, take some things off the table tomorrow and just kind of rotate that into that. So if something's not working, you find something that is working. One of my favorite uh, sayings for myself is don't, don't think of it as taking a loss, all right? If you're in a stock and it's not performing and you're like, well, take this as an example. You have uh, $10,000. You invested in a stock. It's not moving. Now you, you're down $2,000. You you know, you're down $2,000. So you, you have a, a $2,000 loss. You haven't sold yet, but you don't want to sell because you don't want to take that loss. All right? And, but it's not a great stock. You know, you took it for a reason. Whatever it is, it didn't work out, but you refuse to take that loss. So many traders do that. 
but you come across another stock and Johnny says, well, that Charles Schwab looks good. He's going to give me two points on that. If I get those two points, I have a much better chance of getting those two points on a, a stock than getting the two points on a stock that's just dropping and, and broken down and not in the right direction of my trade. You might have taken that trade for some whatever whatever reason, but if it's not working out, um, it's just as easy to have $8,000 with a $2,000 loss. $8,000. doesn't matter if you have a loss or not. You have $8,000 worth of value in, in whatever you're in left at, or left from the 10000 You could take that 8000 Say I don't, don't no longer want to have X Y Z. I want to have C E S C H W. That t eight thousand is still eight thousand. It's in a better stock. You have a better chance of you're not. You're not it's not like you're recovering the loss, but you will regain that money. It's 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 not. It's you have. To, it's the way you look at it. You know, it's eight thousand dollars is eight thousand dollars if it's in a, a crap stock or in a winning stock. You know, even if it came down to four thousand dollars, the same thing. It's like, well, I can't sell it now. I got to wait for it to come back. It probably is not going to come back if if you're dealing with crap stocks. You know, you took a gamble, it lost, it didn't pay off. You don't want to take that loss. What it, just all you have to do is just rip the bandaid off and put it somewhere else. Put it on a, a different uh, stock that's headed in the direction. You have a much better chance. You'll feel better. It's it's just a, a fantastic feeling when you do that. So just kind of remember that. This is in the back of your head. So I look at this one and I said, well, you know, not a bad stock. Also here, here in some chatter, this thing is uh, could be a, um, acquired by, you know, acquired soon. I don't know how soon. I don't know. I'm not going to throw that out. But uh, like I said, a lot of people looking at $50. I would take uh, $45. That's an easy trade on this. Charles Schwab. C uh, S C H W. Now Verizon VZ, again not in this one yet. This one is prime time for tomorrow. Um, you can see all the notes on this thing. Not a not a hard stock to trade. The, the interesting part on this, if we look at the weekly, we have 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. Really sideways. I mean, our high back here in 2013 was around 54 dollars. We got up to about 56, 2016. We pulled all the way back down to 49. Our low was 44, 42. So we have this a pretty decent range. Um, 54 to 40, 40, you know, 10 points, 12 points. Not a bad range. You're, you're, you're down to here. Midpoint of this uh, this big pattern. Again, this is on the weekly. Weekly is not quite oversold, but this is a great investment at this point. You know, downward channel is about to break higher. This one gives you us great divergences too. I called this last divergence for you, double bottom divergence. This was a great, uh, great trade. This was a, a trade back here, a divergence trade. We don't, we don't have a divergence here, but you know, I just want to mention this one is one of my long-term uh, picks. Uh, on this pullback, on this daily pullback, I think we're going to move higher. We're going to eventually break out of this this uh, big band here that we're in. So if we're going to talk about that, we have to get above 55, which gives us six points even before we even get that breakout. So I think it's a good risk reward down here. Really nice. There was a couple of good divergences type stops brought up on the uh, show today. Um, him and Sean found some the other night, and uh, MRO was like I said, I left those notes at the house at the office. Uh, but MRO was one of them, which I liked. There was another one in that same industry. I think it was um, oh, it was I think it was Valero VLO. Let's bring it up. Uh, you know, was it? Hmm. It's a pretty strong stock. I like that PSX. I had some follow through. That was perfect. Nice uh, wedge pattern. Almost similar to this wedge pattern over here, and a very similar pattern. This one kind of gave us a big candle, and then it had a nice follow through. So we'll see if this actually gives us a nice big candle, which we did, and we start to f chop around, but start to follow through as it starts to drift back up. The only real refiner that I like. The other, I have a little oxy messing with it, OXY, but I'm not too uh, excited about it right now. It's, it's slowly working our direction, but it's. I think this will be one of the ones I want to cut loose um, and uh, switch over to uh, 
some of these other stocks are just headed straight up to the stratosphere. This was a uh, divergent setup, which, yeah, it just didn't uh, just didn't play out. But again, I don't use divergences on oil stocks. I really don't. Or commodities in that in that uh, case sometimes they become weaker and even in the case with that cocoa you know had to be careful cocoa or the uh, coffee ETF um, so I'm not a big big fan of this we'll see hopefully it uh, rotates back up get a little bit you know close that gap and they're starting to move back up a little I was looking back at some of these other stocks that we just recently traded. This is the uh, ABV here, and we liked this one a lot. Of course, as you can see, it did break out. It was a it was a good setup. Um, I'm just going down. There's a couple that we would like to keep our eye on. Nothing happened on the CV CVS. But remember the uh, oh waste management and the um, that's the other one. Waste management, great great uh, company. Make America clean again. Some um, the nice pullback. It's already starting to break out. This will turn back up. Very strong chart. Go out here the last two years. I started last July here. It's been just climbing up. Every oversold level could be bought on this. CWST, I'm in this one. This was a uh, another waste management company. We got in on this little consolidation flag. We had a, we had a nice double bottom divergence. It popped. It made some follow through. Right now it's pulled back a little. And I think you guys need to get in on this, uh, get in on this um, pullback. It's right to the 20. It's cheap stock as it is. Um, picture out a year, going out a year. This can be, you know, 20, high 20s, easy. Uh, there's no, there's not a, uh, nothing out here that looks bad on this stock. Going back to waste management, look at January 2016. It was trading at uh, $51. Um, by 2000, end of 2017. $70. It's a nice move. Um, these things all start somewhere. CWST. Could be starting now. I don't like that one. like it a lot. Um, I know there's a couple other ones I'm missing right now. Oh, Under Armour. Here's another one of those uh, lower, lower um, bounce plays here. And normally, I don't. Again, I like pure divergence and stuff. I got myself in a couple of these because they're quality names. Um, we did trade this a couple times, so we got in again. This was not a bad setup here. It was a, it was showing you a nice cell divergence where we have the rise in stochastic sideways action on the chart. Breaks down, comes back down here, and. There's not much here to look at. There's a trend line on regular Under Armour. So if you look at UA, there's a nice trend line there. Uh, nice established pivot areas. And when we normally get a breakdown through a channel line, we open up on a gap and we rotate back up. The next time we come down and touch it, we usually bounce off. Of it. it hasn't bounced off yet, but this is what we're looking at, you know, for this to happen. UA 17, UAA, I guess of the A shares, is at 1905 basically the same pattern they should move pretty close to each other I mean one's not gonna go one direction and the other one you know but you know if I was I was looking at this the Under Armour here very clean pattern good shot that we actually bounce off of this area now these are three that are weak and we're playing these bottom plays we want to make sure that bottom play has a couple things going for us that the divergence that well actually the um, just daily stochastics rotating back up and in some cases you like to have that weekly in your favor and you do have that weekly in your favor on these let me take a look at the UAA again just flat line um, <coughs> well, that's it on that uh, the tradeometer was killer today absolutely fantastic during the uh, the markets if you got to um, follow that at all tomorrow we should have um, similar action on that now I'm going to try my best to get into the office in the morning. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world. They, they say it's going to be, you know, major, major, two to three inches of snow coming down on the on, um, in the morning. I would have to get up maybe six and give it a look. But no one's going to be out there, so the, uh, it's dangerous. I don't think I'm going to do it. So I'll do the show from here probably, but I won't have all my tools. It'll be harder. 
to um, execute some some trades. I won't have my option screens up. I only have limited screens here, not like at the office. So it might be a little different. I just hate that. I hate when that Under Armour though. We'll see how that works tomorrow. Um, breaker. I want to see that bounce. P P R G O is on the cutting block. Charles Schwab like it. Verizon like it. Both of those stocks are going to be very slow moving. 16 to 24 inches uh, up to 30 inches. We'll see. Have a great evening, everyone. I just want to get this little update out for you. Don't forget, we have a few more, couple more days um, to the open house. Just go to daytradingradio.com. You'll see a banner there saying open house. Click on that. It'll open up our, to our dashboard. And you get to check out the dash. You can do it 24-7. We, got, we always got the show on. You get to check out the different uh, different features on the uh, show, different features on the platform, uh, chat room, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of education stuff. All right. <clears throat> Have a great evening. I'll see you in the morning.